My friends at Lehman's recently sent me this Lodge enameled cast iron six quart Dutch oven. And I'm so thrilled about this because they know that I'm from Tennessee and they know that I really value the Lodge company. I've been using Lodge uh, products for years. This is uh, a Tennessee company, Lodge cast iron. So today I wanna show you how to make sourdough bread in the Dutch oven. You know there's so many uses for this Dutch oven, but you might not have thought about making sourdough bread. My friends at Layman's know how much I love to cook, and honestly, Layman's has the perfect recipe for your holidays this year as well. So you can check out the links in the description under this video. So the holidays are fast approaching, and this sourdough bread is one that you could use just as a bread on the table, or you can make it ahead and you can cut this up and use this in your stuffing and dressing recipes. We're gonna need a half a cup of active sourdough starter. Now I am using just uh, measurements today and not weight. I'm going by measurements and not weight because sometimes I do use uh, the scales, but a lot of folks don't have the scales, have a set of scales in their home. So I'm just putting in here a half a cup of good active starter. By the way, I love these big measuring spoons. I get a lot of comments on those on my uh, YouTube videos and folks asking where they can get those. These, um, I actually found these a long time ago at an Amish store, but I have found that Layman's carries these as well. So they're really, really handy to have, big measuring spoons. One and a fourth cups of water. This is pure water. I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons of Redmond Real Salt. I always just use Redmond Real Salt, which actually I think Layman's carries that as well. And then I'm going to mix in three cups of bread flour. Now I'm using, you can use, um, an all-purpose flour, I did that for years, but I love this particular um, high-gluten flour. It is, uh, actually it's Sir Lancelot high-gluten flour, but if you just use a bread flour, you know, that would work really well as, as well. All right, let me just mix up my starter, my pure water, my salt, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add one cup of flour gonna be a total of three cups of flour. And you can do this in the mixer if you want to. And go ahead and remember, and notice I'm lightly filling this cup. You never want to put your measuring cup down in your flour because that's gonna pack it down too much. And if you're new, you might want, new to cooking or baking, you might wanna level it off with a knife. But since I've been cooking for umpteen years, <laughs> I, I don't like, I don't typically use recipes. I don't typically um, do all the things that I do encourage a new cook to do because that's how you learn. All right, now we're with the two cups and then we're just gonna mix this and then we're gonna add the third cup. You can get your arm workouts in for the day. You don't want any dry flower spots. The dough will be dense and kind of shaggy, and that's the word that's used. What we're gonna do at this point is we're going to just let it rest for about 30 minutes. I have a damp cloth, and I will just cover that and walk away, tidy up the kitchen a little bit, and let this rest for about 30 minutes. After the dough has rested for about 30 minutes, we are going to knead it in the bowl for about 15 seconds. I take a rubber spatula and I just try to clean off the edges like that. And then I am going to push it over on top of itself like so. Now you can use your hands, but the reason I don't typically is because you end up with a lot of dough on your hands. I don't wanna waste any but you can do that. And I also don't wanna add extra flour to my hands to do this job because that's going to make a tougher bread. So I just turn the um, bowl clockwise 
and I'm folding it over on top of itself, like so. One reason you wanna clean the bowl like this with the spatula is because it's going to want to, uh, it's going to need to rise overnight and you want to have kind of clean sides, but I don't use a new bowl for the rising. Cover this with the same cloth and we're gonna let it set overnight or roughly 12 or so hours until it has doubled in size. Now, this is going to depend on your kitchen temperature. Um, a lot of factors uh, factor into this, but I don't stress over it. We are a do the best you can kind of attitude at Heritage Ways. And so we are just going to cover it when it's doubled in size, however many hours that is, then we will proceed with the next step. Your dough is ready when it no longer looks dense and it is puffy and it is absolutely doubled in size. So now it's time to form it and prepare it for the second rise. You want to lightly flour a surface. Gently move the dough over to your surface area. Your floured surface area. Now what you want to now do now is to take your dough and you're going to form it into a ball. You're going to put it on top of, fold it on top of itself as you go around in a circular motion. A bench scraper is great for this job, making bread. You're just going to fold it on top of itself, like so. Don't want to use too much flour, but you do need to utilize flour so that it does not um, stick. So I'm going to let that rest. The next step, it's very simple. You can use a banneton, which you can purchase, but you don't have to have one. You can just get any, I have like just a, this small stainless bowl and I am going to actually um, put flour on a cloth. Now this happens to be just a uh, all cotton uh, napkin, but I'm going to flour this cloth. And you can do it when it's in the bowl or on your bench. So there you go. If you wanted to flour it when it's in your bowl. There you go. So you have a floured cloth. After the bowl is prepared, the cloth, you're just going to pull the bread towards you so that it tightens the shape. Use plenty of adequate flour on your hands and it kind of just Pulls it together and tightens it. You're going to use a bench scraper, put it into your bowl, and the seam side will be up. Then you're going to just lightly cover that using the same cloth I used for the dough itself. And I'm gonna let it set for one to two hours until it um, doubles in size, and then I'll be ready to bake it. After the dough has risen a couple of hours, it, it doesn't necessarily have to rise until double. Um, but it is going to rise and be more light and airy in appearance. So at this point, we are simply gonna take a piece of parchment paper. And this parchment paper has been cut so that it will fit adequately inside the cast iron Dutch oven. And I'm just gonna place it on top of the bread. And then I'm gonna gently Turn it over, hold my hand, like so. So you get your bread it comes out onto the parchment.
Now at this point, you can score the bread with a special tool, but I like to teach people how you can do things without having the, the specialty tools, and you can just make whatever design you want. This is just a serrated knife. I'm gonna get a serrated knife that has a finer uh, tooth there. But you can just cut however you want. You can make a cross, or you can get fancy with it and make a special design. And inside my Lodge Dutch oven, I'm going to place this bread using the parchment as the handles. Just let that sit there while the oven is heating up to 450 degrees. So at this point, we are going to cover the Dutch oven. We're gonna cook it for 20 minutes. Then I'm going to take the cover off and cook it for another 30 minutes. And then after that, I will take the uh, parchment out of the Dutch oven and cook the bread for another 10 minutes. So 20, 30, and 10. Also, you can put a, a cookie sheet on the rack underneath this Dutch oven if you want to prevent a really dark crust. If you want a little bit lighter crust because the heat radiates around that pan and doesn't put so much direct heat against the bottom of your uh, Dutch oven. So that's just a tip if you don't want a really dark crust on the bottom. Baking the sourdough bread in the Lodge uh, cast iron enamel lined uh, Dutch oven, the way I did it, covered, uncovered, and then out of the Dutch oven for 10 minutes. And you can adjust that 10 minutes if you don't want it just this dark. You can make it five to 10 minutes. But it allows it to have this uh, great crust that we all love with sourdough. So I hope you'll give it a try. I'm Miss Katie with Heritage Ways. Thanks for watching and count your blessings.